Welcome back. This is Scotty Mack, and I want to take you on another local trip outside Phoenix, Arizona. Today we have a special one that's going to a road that's been closed for five years. The Apache Trail, Arizona State Road 88, has been cleared. And this week they have opened it up. It's a wonderful, twisty, turvy road with a lot of colorful rocks and beautiful scenery. And it is so fresh that Google Maps still shows it as closed. The highlight of the trip, and of course where the rockfall occurred, is the Fish Creek turnout with its very tight turns and steep walls and dramatic photo scenes. Today we're going to traverse it taking off from Apache Junction, heading from west to east to take the full run out to Roosevelt Lake. To get there, we take Highway 60 east until Apache Junction's Idaho Road, which is also Arizona 88. We make our way through Apache Junction to the northeast and on to Arizona 88. It's a beautiful and scenic open drive, and we see a few vehicles along the way. As we proceed on, I can see the remnants of last year's fire and the charcoal areas off to the side of the road. It reminds us how absolutely sensitive the desert is to such devastation. Dropping over the rim inquires twisty turns that are really fun and prepares us for the run around the lake to Tortilla Flats. Canyon Lake is very scenic but also very narrow. You gotta keep your eyes on the road. There are also two bridges in which they are one way and you have to show respect to the anybody coming in the opposing way. Today it's wide open so we'll take it as it goes. You'll notice all of the stalks coming up from the century plant. Plant grows 100 years and then blooms once, which is what those are, and then the plant will die. So we have a whole field of them all blooming at the same time. That's amazing. Boulder Creek. Lake Marina and Tortilla Flat two miles away. We're entering the small town of Tortilla Flat and the end of the pavement shortly after Tortilla Flat it'll be dirt road all the way. It's the first time since 2019 we've been able to make it to Roosevelt Lake through the Apache Trail. So today's going to be a pretty cool, fun day. I've never paid it past Tortilla Flats since 2019 when the trail collapsed, when the road collapse occurred, and it's been blocked off to all traffic. So this is the first time in six years, since six years. Tortilla flat and the dust. The historic town site. The Apache Trail. We're starting, we haven't hit the dirt portion yet, but you'll see that there's 
straight sections and then all of a sudden you'll come across 15 mile per hour really tight turns here. So you've got to be careful on this road. It can lead you to believe you can rage at 45, 50 along the way and then all of a sudden you'll slam into a real tight turn. The Apache Trail, Arizona 88, now open. And here is where the pavement ends. Four wheel drives and UTVs only, they say. No pavement next 22 miles. So this is finally open. This is where it was closed last time I was here. They've been making progress. And this is the first time since 2019 I've been able to go past this point. We're still in the Valley of Saguaros, but they are dwindling as we rise up above. Our destination is going to be Roosevelt Lake, and that feeds the Salt River. So we'll be climbing up at an altitude the whole trip. There's a tortilla trailhead right over there. That's a great hike. Beautiful area, and we are transitioning out of the Saguaro Sonoran Desert and up into the Gila Hillside. There are two trout here if you're into fishing. Two trout just east of here, both the Apache trout with the tiger eye and golden pectoral and caudal fins, and the Gila trout with larger spots on it. And they are extremely rare. Allegedly char that's cut off from the Sea of Cortez, Baja California, and now they're a species all into their own and a variety, and found in the eastern section of Arizona crossing over to New Mexico. Yeah, there's some unimproved areas here. I can see why they recommend four-wheel drive. Nothing that needed to have heavy articulation yet, but it's kind of like Schnebly Hill up in Sedona. Raggedy Road. Hey, thank you very much. Uphill has the right-of-way. Thank you, Mr. Wagoneer. Looks like we do have some people on the road today. They heard the news also. And this is the third day it's open. You can see the old cribbing over there, but also this pile of rubble was part of the collapse, and you can see it going all the way down, back up in to the valley here. You can see the old style cribbing when the road was originally made, oh, probably 100 years ago it looks like, and the colors of the shapes and textures of the rock against the beautiful September sky, we really lucked out today. Off in the distance, you can see the scenic lookout. Seems to be several cars and some pink Santa cans there. And that is looking like the staging area for the entrance to Fish Creek Canyon. Here we have the pink Santa cans of Reliable that advertise on our local TV system. The gate is open for the first time. Let's enter. The gate is wide open. We have some people turning around from the park and going back. I wonder if they came. Although this is technically part of the Sonoran Desert, and we do see a lot of things like the Sorrel Cactus here, you will find a lot of variety in the transition of the zones that you go through. Oh yeah, it's a one-lane road. It looks like a road grader and a bulldozer came through here. And cleared it up enough. Great, because it'll keep the standard traffic out. Although, there hasn't been anything really needed so far as far as high clearance. It's scrappy, it's a dirt road, but you'd find it you know, on any forest service road also. So, this is just a little bit more. 
beautiful though too. Hey, we're dropping down a few more saguaro cactus out of the Agave Hills. Yeah, he cut that corner, didn't they? Boy. Some guys really worked hard to get this scrapping new stakes. I hear that a lot of what they used for the roadway was the fallout that crumbled on it. They brought a crusher up or something. Hey there. And used the rubble from the crusher. Okay, here we go down to Fish Creek. You can see this is supposed to be the worst of it, where the collapse was, and I see a car coming up. So we may just hang out and wait for that car to pass. An uphill traveler always has the right of way. So we politely yield, finding a safe place off the road. to see I let the white Honda Ridgeline proceed on up I pulled over and as I did I saw boy Fish Creek here look at the cutback all the way down right now you can see we're focused in the center of your screen on the rock outcropping which caused the most and biggest boulders to be put onto the road that's all cleared we'll be looking forward to that and then Fish Creek with its u-turn down there you see several cars down there already and you can see uh, colorful red yellow and blue the blue car is fellow youtuber jesse's drone adventure and the yellow jl with the kayaks on top is fellow youtuber bonsai raven as we meander down the picturesque valley we come across the single largest collapsed area from the vertical cliffs that rise above those cliffs have to be well over a thousand feet and have a vertical shear off created all this now the clever thing the engineers did is they used that crushed material as roadway even the large rocks on the left edge are retained as barrier and here is a view of those same rocks from the rear view camera they're substantial and it's a smart use of material as we come to the valley of Fish Creek Canyon and the bridge that crosses it, it is getting to be absolutely picturesque. Have your camera ready. As we come to the bridge across Fish Creek Canyon, there's a, several places stop on both sides. Many people do because just up the canyon, a short way on the west side, is a wonderful cave that you can see in the center of the screen above the road. Very large and spacious, enough where you could camp inside quite easily, and it's very picturesque. Today we're not going to do that because we're doing the whole 22 mile run out to Roosevelt Lake, and we want to see Lake Apache. In off-roading, the uphill has a right of way, but this gentleman is kind enough to yield to let me cross the bridge. Thank you, kind sir. The roadway downhill after the bridge is just as smooth as the ingress to it. There are absolutely no washboards. There's wide spaces, uh, flat roads. I think this is the best time to run this just after they've manicured it. I think they've done a fantastic job. And as we go down the road here, my mileage, my gas mileage is actually doing really well in the 392. I may not have to use either of the fuel packs I brought with me. It is a beautiful September day in 2024, and running down Fish Creek Canyon Road on this is just unbelievably nice. As we continue downhill, there is a turnout on the left of a delta where two rivers meet, and it's a wonderful large place for a picnic if you'd like to stop. A lot of people don't think of the desert being a mountain and picturesque place, but here in the Superstition Mountains, We've got absolutely dramatic mountainside views. At the end of this long run, we have one bridge to cross on the Lewis Creek 
Bridge, Lewis Branty Creek Bridge, and it'll take us up to Mud Creek Canyon along the Apache Trail. I see another Jeeper, so I pull over and let him go by, and I'm wondering if it's another YouTuber. So far today, I've seen Jessie of Jessie's Drone Adventure and Bonsai Raven in her drama-equipped JL with dual kayaks on top. Every single bridge that we encounter along the Apache Trail has been absolutely solid. has been one lane, so you have to extend that courtesy to an opposing driver. But there's absolutely nothing hindering you. Or Actually, I'm kind of wondering why they require four-wheel drive. That is their choice. But everything I've seen today, a streetcar... Uh, could make it. There are four spots they would have to go slow, but they could still make it quite easily. And after Fish Creek, we are now back in a heavily forested Samaro cactus grow. Wow, just didn't grow around that area down there. Time for the Jeep wave. The 392 is having absolutely no problem with any of this road. In fact, I have not even thought about airing down my tires today. And here we are at the east entrance and the gate. You can see where the block off was with the jersey barriers and the locked metal gate. <coughs> and Ranch R right there also. That's their grazing area. Now we're headed to Lake Roosevelt. The source of the Salt River. Barriers and the locked metal gate. <coughs> and Ranch R right there also. That's their grazing area. Now we're headed to Lake Roosevelt. Reams Ranch Trailhead. There's a good hike for you. Yeah, we went through the ragged parts and it is a dirt road, not too different than Schnebly Hill or some of the others that we do around here and very few other types of cars. So I think since it is a new Jeep trail, I love it. This is just getting more and more beautiful. As you see, we can come right up here and look at the marina. This is just getting more and more beautiful. As you see, we can come right up here and look at the marina. How'd you like to have a barbecue on your boat out there tonight with the superstition mountains looming above you, the rocks? There's the marina. Beautiful red rocks rising up above it. All right, we just passed through a signman, gentleman on the side of the road, telling you if it's okay to go past the construction. He said it was. So we go slowly and you can see they've been doing great work. Boy, that, all those boulders were cleared and by crushing at Fish Creek. I saw the video on that where they interviewed the Department of Transportation. They just took those rocks those, those car sized boulders and chunk them up and use them as grading material. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're pushing it around. Now we're going over it. It's nice and wide. So far, they've done a fantastic job. Okay. Ah, here's a drainage well. They repaired that. Crushed rock everywhere. Wow. They haven't just pushed dirt around. They restored the, the drainage flues. And there's another one. From the east side, they have really laid crushed rock down. I wonder if that is the first step to paving. So I understand budgets are really tight and there was a million dollars just to get this work done. So it's not All right, that looks like the end of the construction zone. We passed both gate entrances and we are descending now. Lots of saguaro over here. Here's a flagman sign and it looks like we have another stop. Hello. Good. Guys, uh, just be careful when you're going down the hill, make eye contact with the operators. Uh, he knows you're passing by, alright? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Uh, some big machinery. I've seen at least five of these culverts and here's where the hard work actually happened They're at this one clearing it out. You got a cement culvert there. They put crushed rock down. Wow These guys are going all the way Just some nice heavy equipment. Oh, I see <laughs> Go to the road is pushed also just some nice heavy equipment. Oh, I see <laughs> Go to the road is pushed also Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Heavy, heavy machinery. So I'm following one of the service trucks. Take advantage of his flashing lights. Wow, this is cement pads that have been laid down in sections. This is, oh, because it's in a creek bed. That's what this is, huge, wide creek bed coming down. Massive. Yeah, that's what they usually do is put a pad in the heavy flood areas to at least contain it. And that cement lasts a long time. and into the hills. It's again like new asphalt. Hey, someone's going jet skiing. Entering the burned watershed. Roosevelt Dam, we are out. That was the Apache Trail, Arizona 88. A few points. Parking lot. This 
this one you can see all the drill marks still there. Where we will head south. And that was the Apache Trail, the full length. Thank you very much for coming along. This is Scotty Mack saying, have a great day.